Okay, let's talk about the culture concept from an anthropological perspective. We can think about culture a couple of different ways. Um, we can think about it th as the big C, as my professor at Ohio State used to call it, which is an overarching general concept of culture that can be applied to all culture groups. And then we have the little C, which are the particulars of a specific group of people. Now we're going to look at big C first in a little more depth. So big C, when we're talking about that overarching general concept of culture, means that culture is learned. It is non-biological. We're not born with it. We learn it over our lifetime. Culture is shared. And while we each have our own cultural peculiarities, we share a large part of our culture with others. Culture is symbolic. It gives meanings to things. And language might be the most important example of the symbolic nature of culture. We're going to talk about that more in another lecture. Culture is holistic. Ideally, culture is all-encompassing. It's a blueprint for living and tells us how to respond in any given situation. Of course, in reality, culture doesn't give us all of the answers. And that's when we start to see culture change. So holistic is kind of related to the next part, which is that culture is integrated in that it's almost like the system that works all together. So you can kind of think of culture as this clock and it has, you know, clock has intricate mechanical systems that work together to keep it operational. So think of culture as a system, a system of institutions that work together to meet the needs of the group. Now we're going to come back to little c a little bit later. We're also going to see how some of these concepts emerge in uh, different kinds of cultures. So let's talk first about the levels of culture. And cultural traits can be grouped at several different levels. At the upper levels, the traits are general, and most people don't think about their culture at that particular level. But it is um, important because it does impact our culture, even if we're not aware of it. Now the levels of culture, except for the idiosyncratic, are stereotypes. And you know, This doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing unless you use stereotypes as a basis for discrimination. Um, we can use stereotypes to develop expectations, um, but again, keeping an open mind and knowing that this is a big general statement and there are going to be exceptions to the rule is very, very important. So let's look at the international level, and this is often referred to as Western culture or Eastern culture. Now historically, the division fell along two lines, religion and industry. So Eastern culture is usually thought of as non-industrial, but through the process of modern development, that line is starting to become a little fuzzy. Eastern culture also refers to a different way of thinking, which is best exemplified in the East religions, such as Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism. Now, Interdependence of people is a defining characteristic of Eastern philosophy and duty to family over self is stressed. The other thing that encapsulates Eastern culture is the approach to healing. In the East, it is generally believed to be ancient naturalistic traditions, so think acupuncture and herbal remedies. Western culture is industrial, so capitalism rules and behavior geared for independent success is stressed. Now, medicinally speaking, we in the West, quotation marks around that, prefer to have formally educated doctors and scientifically developed medicines. And religiously, cultures are primarily Christian, but again, not all, but we are talking about kind of a dominant particular trait. Um, now, obviously, none of the broad geographic areas are all one thing or the other, but think in terms of, again, dominance. Eastern cultures encourage people to develop their skills. It's not it's just not that it's for themselves, but for their group. So that could be the family, it could be the village or some other entity. And in Western cultures, the duty to family isn't absent. It's just not stressed as strongly. So again, keep in mind that this East versus West mentality is rapidly breaking down through the process of globalization. Then we have a national level. And just as the word implies, we're talking about a country's culture. For instance, if someone talks about the Irish, certain mental pictures come to mind. I chose this graphic for the United States because it talks about the American dream, which is often seen as one of these ideal traits, but it also illustrates the disenfranchisement that many people see today. Now within the national culture, there are subcultures. And subcultures exist within the framework of the national culture, which in and of itself is a subculture of international culture. Subcultures incorporate values and norms from the national culture, but perhaps not all of the values and norms. So let's look at a regional subculture first. And if I was to talk about the United States in terms of the South, the Midwest, or the Southwest, we start to make some assumptions about the culture of the individuals from those geographic regions. Same thing with the state level culture. When we hear about people from Ohio, which is where I'm from, or Kentucky, or Washington State, we start to automatically assume some things about the people that are from there. 
So again, just broad stereotypes, not going to apply to everybody, only really problematic when it leads to discrimination in some shape or form. Then we have local culture, and this could be along the lines of urban versus suburban versus rural. It could be something like Seattle versus Tacoma. It could be a neighborhood. There are a lot of ways to view the local. Uh, when I told people I was moving to Seattle, most people said you had to be willing to drink a lot of coffee. So that's an example of a local trait. Um, it could be something on the lines of emo, grunge. It could even be occupations. So the local can really break out into a lot of different types of subcultures. Then we have countercultures, and cult countercultures go against something in the mainstream or the dominant culture. Now, the classic example of that is the hippie or the protest movements of the 1960s. Um, a more recent example would be the anti-globalization movement. And then we have the idiosyncratic, and this is going to be the most narrow of all of the definitions of the levels of culture. And this refers to our personal culture. So we're influenced by and choose norms from all of the previous levels of culture to create our personal or idiosyncratic culture. Our family and friends are often the most influential, but as we mature and we move away from home, our personal culture may begin to look nothing like the culture we grew up in. Now for a cultural map assignment, you'll need to incorporate elements from each level of culture into your graphic representation of your idiosyncratic culture. But again, there are more details for that in the instructions for that. So now you can move on to the next lecture for culture.